लक्ष्मीकांत इंडियन पॉलिटी चैप्टर सेवन फंडामेंटल राइट्स राइट अगेंस्ट एक्सप्लोटेशन वन प्रोहिबिशन ऑफ ट्रैफिक इन ह्यूमन बीइंग्स एंड फोर्स्ड लेबर आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी थ्री प्रोहिबिट्स ट्रैफिक इन ह्यूमन बीइंग्स बेकार फोर्स्ड लेबर एंड अदर सिमिलर फॉर्म्स ऑफ फोर्स्ड लेबर Any contravention of this provision shall be an offence punishable in accordance with law. This right is available to both citizens and non-citizens. It protects the individual not only against the state but also against private persons. The expression "traffic in human beings" include a selling and buying of men, women, and children like goods; b immoral traffic in women and children. including prostitution c devdasis and d slavery to punish these acts the parliament has made the immoral traffic prevention act 1956 the term begar means compulsory work without remuneration it was a peculiar indian system under which the local zamindars sometimes used to force their tenants to render services without any payment in addition to begar The Article Twenty Three prohibits other similar forms of forced labor like bonded labor. The term forced labor means compelling a person to work against his will. The word force includes not only physical or legal force, but also force arising from the compulsion of economic circumstances, that is, working for less than the minimum wage. In this regard, the bonded labor system, Abolition Act. 1976 the minimum wages act 1948 the contract labor act 1970 and the equal remuneration act 1976 were made article 23 also provides for an exception to this provision it permits the state to impose compulsory service for public purposes as for example military service or social service for which it is not bound to pay However, in imposing such service, the state is not permitted to make any discrimination on grounds only of religion, race, caste, or class. Two prohibition of employment of children in factories, etc. Article twenty four prohibits the employment of children below the age of fourteen years in any factory, mine, or other hazardous activities like construction work or railway. but it does not prohibit their employment in any harmless or innocent work the child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 is the most important law in this direction in addition the employment of children act 1938 the factories act 1948 the mines act 1952 the merchant shipping act 1958 the plantation labor act 1951 the motor transport workers act 1951 apprentices act 1961 the bidi and cigar workers act 1966 and other similar acts prohibit the employment of children below certain age in 1996 the supreme court directed the establishment of child Labor Rehabilitation Welfare Fund in which the offending employer should deposit a fine of 20000 rupees for each child employed by him it also issued directions for the improvement of education health and nutrition of children the commissions for protection of child rights act 2005 was enacted to provide for the establishment of a national commission and state commissions for protection of child rights and children's courts for providing speedy trial of offences against children or of violation of child rights in 2006 the government banned the employment of children as domestic servants or workers in business establishments like hotels dhabas restaurants shops factories resorts spas tea shops and so on it warned that anyone employing children below 14 years of age would be liable for prosecution and penal action the child labor prohibition and regulation amendment act 2016 amended the child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 
It has renamed the Principal Act as the Child and Adolescent Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act, 1986. Right to Freedom of Religion 1. Freedom of Conscience and Free Profession, Practice and Propagation of Religion Article 25 says that all persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess, practice and propagate religion. The implications of these are a. Freedom of conscience, inner freedom of an individual to mould his relation with God or creatures in whatever way he desires. b. Right to profess, declaration of one's religious beliefs and faith openly and freely. c. Right to practice, performance of religious worship, rituals, ceremonies and exhibition of beliefs and ideas. d. Right to propagate, transmission and dissemination of one's religious beliefs to others or exposition of the tenets of one's religion. But it does not include a right to convert another person to one's own religion. Forcible conversions impinge on the freedom of conscience guaranteed to all the persons alike. From the above, it is clear that Article 25 covers not only religious beliefs, doctrines, but also religious practices, rituals. Moreover, these rights are available to all persons, citizens as well as non-citizens. However, these rights are subject to public order, morality, health and other provisions relating to fundamental rights. Further, the state is permitted to a. Regulate or restrict any economic, financial, political or other secular activity associated with religious practice and b. Provide for social welfare and reform or throw open Hindu religious institutions of a public character to all classes and sections of Hindus. Article 25 also contains two explanations. 1. Wearing and carrying of kirpan is to be included in the profession of the Sikh religion and 2. The Hindus, in this context, include Sikhs, Jans and Buddhists. 2. Freedom to manage religious affairs. According to Article 26, every religious denomination or any of its section shall have the following rights. A. Right to establish and maintain institutions for religious and charitable purposes. b. Right to manage its own affairs in matters of religion. c. Right to own and acquire movable and immovable property. and d. Right to administer such property in accordance with law. Article 25 guarantees rights of individuals while Article 26 guarantees rights of religious denominations or their sections. In other words, Article 26 protects collective freedom of religion. Like the rights under Article 25, the rights under Article 26 are also subject to public order, morality and health but not subject to other provisions relating to the fundamental rights. The Supreme Court held that a religious denomination must satisfy three conditions. A. It should be a collection of individuals who have a system of beliefs, doctrines, which they regard as conducive to their spiritual well-being. B. It should have a common organization. And C. It should be designated by a distinctive name. Under the above criteria, the Supreme Court held that the Ramakrishna Mission and Anand Marg are religious denominations within the Hindu religion. It also held that Aurobindo Society is not a religious denomination. 3. Freedom from taxation for promotion of a religion Article 27 lays down that no person shall be compelled to pay any taxes for the promotion or maintenance of any particular religion or religious denomination. In other words, the state should not spend the public money collected by way of tax for the promotion or maintenance of any particular religion. This provision prohibits the state from favouring, patronising and supporting one religion over the other. This means that the taxes can be used for the promotion or maintenance of all religions. This provision prohibits only levy of a tax and not a fee. 
This is because the purpose of a fee is to control secular administration of religious institutions and not to promote or maintain religion. Thus, a fee can be levied on pilgrims to provide them some special service or safety measures. Similarly, a fee can be levied on religious endowments for meeting the regulation expenditure. 4. Freedom from attending religious instruction Under Article 28, no religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institution wholly maintained out of state funds. However, this provision shall not apply to an educational institution administered by the state but established under any endowment or trust requiring imparting of religious instruction in such institution. Further, no person attending any educational institution recognized by the state or receiving aid out of state funds shall be required to attend any religious instruction or worship in that institution without his consent. In case of a minor, the consent of his guardian is needed. Thus, Article 28 distinguishes between four types of educational institutions. a. Institutions wholly maintained by the state. b. Institutions administered by the state but established under any endowment or trust. c. Institutions recognized by the state. d. Institutions receiving aid from the state. In A. Religious instruction is completely prohibited while in B. Religious instruction is permitted. In C. and D. Religious instruction is permitted on a voluntary basis. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to buy this book, then link in the description you can buy it from there. If this video help you in any way so please do like and share this video and hit the subscribe button.